Have you ever taken some time out of your day to think about this weird looking thing and how it completely changed the gaming world? Probably not. And to be honest, me neither. I'm a keyboard and mouse type of guy anyway. But I feel like today should be the day we take a good look at the joystick with all of its different phases, functions and names and finally pay our respects to it and the role it played in gaming over the years. But first, what even is a joystick? Is it the same as an analog stick? Is it not? What about digital sticks? While all of these can be called joysticks, as it basically just is a broader term for control sticks used in gaming scenarios, I think the best way to differentiate all of these is by how they work on a technical level, as well as their use. An analog stick transmits its data through, as the name says, analog values, or in other words, electric pulses of varying amplitude, the maximum amplitude in this context of moving in a circle being 360 degrees, whereas digital sticks transmit their data in a binary form, where instead of having pulses of immense and varied amplitude, you have two, one or zero, meaning it works just like a D-pad where you can only move to a limited number of directions, usually 4 or 8, only it had a different shape. Analog 6 are the ones that we're used to as people of the 21st century, ever since the Nintendo 64 popularized its usage with its 64-bit processor capable of full 3D gaming, where simple binary movement just wasn't gonna cut it. Yeah, about that. And digital sticks were the ones you'd find on your Atari 2600's controller or the beast that was the NES Advantage. A good way to explain how a digital stick works is through something like those crappy mini arcades, where you literally screw the stick onto the D-pad because it works the exact same way as one. But you can call all of these whatever you want. Analog sticks, control sticks, thumbsticks, but I went with joystick because despite being a term that isn't used as often as it was back then, everyone will know what I'm talking about. And now, onto the history part. Right after this quick word from me. Yes, me. Listen here, this guy is hating on me for no reason, and I need your help. So if you're into gaming slash internet video essays like this, make sure to like and stick around so this guy here can learn that I'm a good guy who makes good stuff. But yeah, that's it. The first instance of anything that resembles a joystick in history would be C.B. Merrick's patent for an electrical distance control system, which he developed at the United States Naval Research Laboratory back in 1926. And just to make it clear, even if the joystick had its origins in the realm of aviation, I'm more focused on the gaming side of things, and talking about planes for half an hour wouldn't exactly be my cup of tea. So to see how it got its start on the gaming side of things, we'll have to jump to the 60s, specifically 1969 with Sega's Missile Arcade, though this joystick only had two directions, those being left and right. From what I could find, four-way joysticks, aka D-pads but with a different shape, were first featured in Atari Space Race in 1973, or Taito's clone of that game called Astro Race from the same year. Wikipedia seems to claim Taito's version was the first with this kind of joystick, so I don't really know. If you have no idea who Taito is, they made Space Invaders. Speaking of Taito again, in 1975 they introduced dual stick controls and 8-way joysticks in their Western Gun arcade known as Gunfight in America, where one stick would control the player and the other would control the direction of the weapon. While there were dozens of other arcades that used and popularized the joystick, Pac-Man being the most popular example I can think of, there's not much more to say about these early days of gaming, especially since a lot of the time arcades and early home consoles would use paddles over any kind of control method, as 90% of anything really at this time was a Pong clone, so I guess we'll have to see what the later 70s and the 1980s have for us. This new era of the gaming world, gone was the need to have to leave your home and go to the local arcade to play some games. They kept existing for a few more decades, but now you could play a bunch of different games at home. As we all know, the console that brought all of this to the public eye was the Atari 2600, a system that played a defining role in the history of the joystick for being the first popular console to feature one, a digital stick in this case. If you want to look for the first home console with an analog stick, you actually wouldn't need to look much further, as that title goes to the 1292 video system released just a year later in 1978. 
During this time, personal computers became more and more affordable, and PC gaming became more mainstream. As such, popular computers at the time, such as the Apple IIe and the Commodore 64, received their own joystick featuring controllers, with Atari implementing an analog stick in their new 5200 console. And then… Yeah. A couple of years later though, Nintendo repackaged their two-year-old Japanese games, sold them alongside a VCR lookalike, and saved the day, bringing the D-pad over to the West and making the joystick a little less popular during its lifespan. The technology did have its 15 minutes of fame on the NES, with SQWare's NES Advantage, one of the first arcade controllers made for a home console. The NES Advantage, besides looking like a beefed-up regular NES controller, replaced the D-pad with an arcade-style joystick and offered some other cool features such as turbo buttons. The world of home consoles was expanding, but the arcade experience wasn't forgotten in people's minds, especially with the popularity of games like Street Fighter II and Mortal Kombat. As such, arcade controllers, or arcade sticks, became very popular in 8 and later 16-bit consoles, with examples ranging from the aforementioned NES Advantage, to the Sega Power Stick, to the Neo Geo, which came packed in with an arcade controller. During this era, arcade sticks were the main thing that kept the joystick popular, apart from the arcades themselves, as most home consoles at the time featured inferior hardware to the arcade cabinets, so a simple D-pad was enough for the job. This would soon change, as the joystick would make its revolutionary return to the spotlight of the gaming world, completely changing the way we play games in the process. The 23rd of June 1996 marked the release of the Nintendo 64 in Japan. Not the first 64-bit console, nor the first console to feature an analog stick, but it was the first one to combine both of these concepts into a neat little package, and with some extra Nintendo charm added in, it managed to sell reasonably well and completely modify the average gaming experience in the process, not just because of its odd three-arm design, but also due to what lied in the middle of it, that being the N64's analog joystick. Despite being relatively simple on a hardware level, by working in a very similar way to a trackball mouse, the N64's control stick made up for this by being a necessary input method to one of the most iconic consoles of all time, with some of the best games of all time, helping breathe some new life into Nintendo's most important series, when just five years prior their games looked like this. The success of the Nintendo 64, at least compared to Nintendo's last product, helped pave a way into a new era for the joystick and for gaming as a whole with every major home console since having their own go at the analog stick. Systems like the Dreamcast followed Nintendo's footsteps by only featuring one analog stick, and also by having an equally weird controller, while competitors like Sony combined its already existing controller with features first introduced in the arcades, and brought the best of both worlds to your hands, with the introduction of the dual analog controller which preceded the DualShock, creating the most iconic controller lineup of all time, thanks in part to the two analog sticks which further refined movement in a 3D space from where the N64 left off. I mean, if you try to think of a controller, chances are you are most likely going to imagine something with this shape. That's how defining the DualShock series was. Sony further innovated in the joystick world by introducing the PSP. Not the first handle to have one, as that would be the Neo Geo Pocket, but it was the first one to feature an analog stick, as it was necessary for the system's extensive library of full 3D games. Soon after, motion controls hit the gaming scene with the release of the Nintendo Wii, and while it wasn't gonna end the joystick or anything, it no longer was the new kid in the neighborhood but Nintendo managed to use motion controls in tandem with the joystick by creating the nunchuck, which helped the Wii survive in its later years, when everyone was sick of motion controls and wanted to play games in a more traditional way again. And after the Wii, it was clear the joystick was here to stay. No other input method would even come close to it, on console at least. And despite issues like stick drift, the joystick continues to be a very loved component of the gaming world, even a century after its invention and after all the different industries that used it. It's so weird how common and iconic the joystick is, no matter the system, and how very few videos exist documenting its history. So I hope this video did just that. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to stick around, as we're getting pretty close to 2000 subscribers. And with all of that said and done, I wish you all a very nice day.